do 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 do. He's cute. Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society and today we're going to crochet together this mini monster. She is only about 3 inches tall, made with worsted weight yarn, and she'd be a perfect and quick project for Valentine's Day. You can stick a little candy lollipop in her arm and hand her over and she'll be loved forever. Let's get started crocheting this huggable little monster and I'll show you what supplies you'll need. For supplies, you'll want to grab two colors of worsted weight yarn. Here I have Knit Picks Comfy Worsted, it's one of my favorites. Then you'll also want to grab an E crochet hook, that's a three and a half millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, a yarn needle, a few stitch markers if you have them, some pins for assembly, some polyfill stuffing. I also included a lollipop just for fun to show you how you could use her as a Valentine gift at the end of the video. Two pretty important supplies that I did forget were some DMC embroidery floss. I just have black and then an embroidery needle so we can do the mouth and the eyelashes and then two nine millimeter safety eyes. I like to use the plastic ones with the backing. We're gonna start our monster pattern by crocheting foot number one first. So you'll wanna put five single crochet into a magic circle. And if you don't know how to do a magic circle, I'll show you this alternative way. We're gonna start by making a slip knot. We're gonna wrap a long piece of yarn around two fingers crisscrossing at the top. I'm gonna to use my ring finger to hold the tail in place and I'm gonna move the back piece of yarn to the front. I'm gonna pull up on that yarn tightening at the base and using the tail to move the yarn back and forth. I'm going to insert my hook, tighten the yarn, and I'm going to chain two. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through once, yarn over, and pull through twice. Now you will have two chains on your hook, and we're going to start in the second chain from the hook. Here's the first, and here's the second. We're going to make five single crochet in that second stitch from the hook. So you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, you'll have two loops on your hook, then you're going to yarn over and pull through again to make one single crochet. We're going to make another one, so insert your hook under the same stitch, yarn over, pull up, you'll have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. That's single crochet number two. We are going to insert our hook again, yarn over, two loops on your hook, yarn over again. This is our third single crochet. You want to make two more. So this is single crochet four and single crochet five. So this is another way that you can make your magic circle. Here we have five single crochets and now we're going to close that middle circle by pulling on that tail from our slip knot. I'm going to show you how to count your stitches. You're going to be looking for the V stitches. So here we have one, two, three, four, and five. You'll see a little piece here and that's just where we got started with our slip knot. You want to take your stitch marker and put it in the last stitch of the round. Now we're going to start round two by increasing in each stitch, meaning that we are going to place two single crochet into each stitch round. So place your hook underneath that first stitch and we are going to make two single crochet. So this is single crochet one and then single crochet two. This is your first increase. So we're going to move to our next stitch and we are going to make another increase. So a single crochet one, single crochet two. Moving to our next stitch, we'll do the same thing. Single crochet one and single crochet two. This is our fourth stitch, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then you'll always work your last increase 
with the stitch that has the stitch marker. Okay, so here's our last increase. We're gonna move our stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And then I'm just gonna tighten this middle again. You usually have to tighten it for a few rounds before it'll stay closed on its own. So for round number three, we're gonna make an increase in the first stitch. I'll show you here. And then we're gonna make a single crochet in the next stitch. So in this first stitch, we're gonna make an increase. So we'll single crochet once and then single crochet again in that same stitch. And then moving over, we're gonna make one single crochet. In the next stitch, we'll make another increase. Single crochet one, single crochet two, and then moving over, we'll make one single crochet in the next stitch. In the next stitch, we'll increase again. And then move over a stitch and make one single crochet. So in the next stitch, we'll make an increase. Then we'll move over one and make one single crochet. And then we'll repeat this one more time. One increase. And then ending in the stitch with our stitch marker, we'll end with one single crochet. Change your stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And then we can continue on. Here I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna count my rounds. This is round one two, and round three. So now we're gonna be working on round four. Round four tests the single crochet in the back loop only for the next 15 stitches. So we're only gonna put our hook underneath the back loop. The front loop is the one that faces you and the back loop is the one that is away from you. We are gonna put our hook underneath that back loop only and we are gonna single crochet. We're gonna do the exact same thing all the way around. Insert your hook under the back loop and make a single crochet. Repeat this all the way around until you reach the stitch marker. I do suggest that you count your stitches after each round, especially if you are a beginner and you're just starting out, it really stinks when you continue on and then you realize that you don't have the right amount of stitches. So it's best to just get in the habit of checking really quick when you're done with the round. Okay, so here is our last stitch. It's the one with the stitch marker and we're doing our last single crochet. So when you crochet in the back loop only, you make this little ridge and that's what we want and you'll see once we make the foot why we made the ridge. So change your stitch marker to the last stitch of the round and we'll continue on with round five through seven. So here we have round one, two, three, and then round four is the one up here. It's gonna be right past the ridge. So you can remember that when you're counting as you continue the single crochet. So we're gonna go back under both loops and we are gonna continue to crochet all the way around for 14, 15 stitches, I'm sorry. When you reach the end of the round, just change your stitch marker and continue single crocheting all the way around for round six and round seven, and then we'll meet back at the end. Okay, I'm reaching the last stitch of round seven, so I'm gonna go into the stitch with my stitch marker and then from here, you just wanna make sure that you have 15 stitches all the way around. And then we're gonna count our rounds to make sure we have seven. So this is one, two, three, four is above the ridge, five, six, and seven. From here, we're gonna leave a long tail and we're gonna fasten off. So just put your piece down, grab your scissors, and snip off a piece of yarn. And then you're gonna get set up, yarn over and pull the yarn all the way through. And then I like to just tug a little at the end. So we're not gonna stuff this piece, we're just gonna put it to the side. 
and you are going to do the exact same thing for foot two. I'm not showing foot two because it's the exact same pattern. So go ahead and go rewind the video back a little and make foot two and I will meet you back at the end of round seven. Do not fasten off. Just hold on tight. <laughs> We're going to do a few things and we'll meet you back. Okay, at this point, you are doing round seven of foot number two, and here I'm reaching the end of round seven. So I'm gonna put my last stitch in the stitch with my stitch marker. You just wanna double check to make sure that you have 15 stitches. And from here, I'm gonna change my stitch marker to the last stitch of round seven. We're not gonna fasten off. You're gonna grab your foot number one, the first foot you made, and we're gonna insert our hook into the first stitch. So I'm gonna show you here how to find that first stitch. If you pull up on your fasten off, you see that this stitch is taken. The more you pull up, the more that you'll see that that stitch is taken. So we're gonna move over one to our left. So that will be the first stitch that we work into. To connect your feet, you're gonna insert your hook into that first stitch of foot one. It feels really awkward, but I will walk you through this. Get set up with your working yarn. You can let your other tail just hang. And from here, we're gonna do a single crochet. So I like to hold on to that, that first foot and it feels super weird, but we are going to yarn over. We're gonna pull through. We're gonna have two loops on the hook, just a normal single crochet, yarn over and pull through. And now you're connected, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Your foot one and two are connected and it feels super weird still, but you're just gonna continue crocheting all the way around foot one until you reach the end. This is one of those techniques that seems super intimidating and then once you do it, you're like, oh, that was not so bad. <laughs> At least that's how I was. Okay, so we're continuing to single crochet all the way around. And we are reaching the end here. So we have one stitch. And then you'll notice that you have your fast enough bump and you'll single crochet into that last stitch here. Okay, so now this is where things get a little tricky because everything looks like little blobs. But my advice is to pull up once again to see which yarn is attached. And here you can pull up and see that this stitch is taken so you're gonna move over a stitch. So you're just gonna continue single crocheting into that stitch. You're skipping that one and you're going into that first stitch. So now you're single crocheting around foot number two. I've used this technique in many of my patterns, in my bear, in my pocket, alien so it's a good technique to know okay we're going to continue single crocheting until we hit our stitch marker you definitely want to make sure that you count all your stitches and make sure that you have 30 stitches because this is the time when things can get a little wonky and you can miss a stitch so double check take the time to pause the video and count your stitches so here we're putting our last stitch in and then we're going to change our stitch marker. So here I want to show you for the next round, there is a stitch that looks really small and sometimes it, it may just look small for me, but I feel like it'll probably look small for you too. You want to make sure that when you're counting, your stitches that you do not skip that stitch. It looks sometimes hidden. So I'm just counting here to make sure that I have 30. Here I'm ending 30 in the stitch with my stitch marker. Okay, so now you're saying, Katie, great, like looks awesome, but I have this huge hole in the middle. <laughs> and do not worry, that's why we kept our fastened off piece 
from foot one. So grab your yarn needle, thread your yarn through the needle, and we're gonna close up that hole. So what I like to do is go under two loops of one side and then two loops of the other side on the other foot. And then go through and then I'll back up and I'll do that one more time going through four loops total. And then I pull really tight when I do it. And you'll see here that already that hole is closing up. So no stuffing will get through. I like to do it a third time and then on my third time, I'm going to make a knot. So I'm going to show you here, if you go slow, you'll have a loop at the end. And you'll put your yarn needle behind the loop, insert it behind the loop, and then pull up. And that'll make a knot on the inside of your feet. We just want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and that the stuffing doesn't come out later. Now you can take your fastened off piece and stuff it in. And now we are good to go. We're gonna continue crocheting round nine. So we're gonna single crochet all the way around for 30 stitches. And once again, you just wanna make sure that you do not miss that first stitch because it can look a bit hidden. So that one's taken, I pulled up and I'm moving one over. Okay, so single crochet all the way around and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm reaching the end of round nine and we're also gonna make a color change here. So I'm gonna show you when you put your hook into the last stitch, the one with the stitch marker, you're gonna pull up on your piece of yarn. You're gonna have two loops on the hook. Then you can put this piece down and grab your other color. In my case, it's pink. So what I like to do for Amigurumi is just make a knot around my old color, in this case, blue, and then I pull my new color all the way down. I ditch my old color and I get set up with my new color, pink, and then I continue the single crochet by yarning over and pulling through. This way my old stitch is still blue, but my new one will be pink. So from here I'm gonna change my stitch marker and get ready to start round 10. Round 10 through 16, are single crocheting all the way around for 30 stitches in your new color. Because this is a lot of single crocheting, I'm gonna have you pause the video and I will come back at the end of round 16. Just a quick note, after you get a few stitches in with your new color, you can go ahead and snip off that old color so it's not in your way while you single crochet through all your rounds. Okay, I'm reaching the last ditch of round 16. So I'm gonna place my last single crochet and then I'm gonna change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And then I'm gonna loosen up on this yarn. And if you have another stitch marker, place it in your working yarn so that we can keep it in place while we do our eyes. You'll wanna grab your eyes and your embroidery needle and floss. So for eye placement, I like to grab a straight pin and if you don't have one, that's fine. For the pattern, it says to place the eyes between round 13 and 14. So I'm counting here to find 13 and 14. You can pause the video and count yourself. I'm going to place my pin in the middle, somewhat in the middle of the body between round 13 and 14. And then the pattern says to leave five stitches open in between the eyes. So here I'm just trying to count to make sure that I have five stitches open. I like to do this before I place the eyes because the eyes can stretch out your yarn. So I kind of like to get an idea of what I'm doing before I place them. So here I'm inserting my first eye and then I'll place my second eye and I will make sure that I have five stitches in between. From here, we're going to embroider on the mouth, so don't put the eye backings on just yet. Grab your embroidery floss and your needle, thread a long piece of floss into the needle, and then make a few knots on the end. 
we are going to place our first stitch right next to the eye between round 13 and 14. So we are going to make somewhat of a V shape going from here and then down a row and then back up a row next to the eye. To get started, I like to insert my needle underneath a stitch on the inside of the head. I pull it all the way through to the knot and then I insert it again, either in the same stitch or a different stitch, pulling all the way through until I have a loop. I'm going to put my needle behind the loop and pull through and that makes just a little knot on the inside. Starting in the stitch next to the eye between round 13 and 14, I'm going to insert my needle from back to front. And then I'm going to move down a row and move over one stitch. So you'll be towards the middle of the face. So I'm going to go from front to back. Then I'm going to go back up between round 13 and 14 in the stitch right next to the eye. I'm leaving one stitch open in the middle. And then I'm going to pull that through. And then I'm going to go back through that bottom stitch to make a smile. Embroidery is not my forte, but this is the easiest way to make a smile. Moving on to the eyelashes, it's your prerogative whether you want to add them, but I'm going to show you how I like to do that here. I place my needle from the inside of the head and I like to reach the corner of my safety eye as close to it as I possibly can get. So I'm pretty close to my safety eye. I'm going to pull that through. And then I like to just follow along the same line as the eye and just skipping a stitch, pulling that through. And then I try, I'm sorry, I'm out of focus here, but I try to go back through that same stitch that I did near the eye. And I'll just move up a row and pick a stitch. So moving over, to the other eye. Going from back to front, I like to get as close to the safety eye as I can. And then I'm just going to leave a stitch open next to the eye and move over and then pull that through. Then insert your needle back through that first stitch you made near the safety eye. Pull that through and then move up a row and over a stitch. And there you have it, some cute little eyelashes. So from here we want to secure our work. So we're going to make a knot on the inside. So grab a piece of yarn, pull your needle through and then pull up a loop and then insert your hook from behind that loop. And that makes a knot. And I usually like to do this two or three times. Once you have your yarn secured, you can just cut off a piece of yarn and put that inside of your body. From here, you'll want to snap on your safety eyes. So what I like to do is get my eye backings on and I like to do about two snaps. I like to give them a little bit of wiggle room, but sometimes they just snap on their own. So if it goes all the way to the end, don't worry about it. It's really not a big deal at all. So here I'm snapping on the other side and your eyes, mouth, and eyelashes are done. Now we're gonna continue on with the pattern starting with round 17. We're gonna get ready to start round 17. Round 17 starts with a decrease and we haven't done that yet. So I'm going to show you how to do an invisible decrease here. You're going to place your hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch. And then you're going to go directly underneath the second front loop. So you're underneath two loops here. You're going to yarn over and go through both of those loops. And then you're going to have two loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So here you've combined two stitches into one. The pattern says to single crochet in the next four. So we're going to single crochet one, two, three, and 
and four. Okay, we're gonna do another decrease. So we're gonna put our hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch. Then you're gonna put it underneath the front loop of the second stitch. Yarn over, go through two loops. You have two loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two loops. Now you're gonna single crochet in the next four. So this is our second single crochet. Three and four. We're gonna do another decrease, go underneath the front loop, go underneath the front loop again, yarn over, yarn over again and pull through. We're gonna single crochet in the next four. If I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause the video and just take it at your own pace. We're gonna decrease again, so we're gonna go under the front loop, front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. We're gonna single crochet in the next four stitches. A quick note, after you do a decrease, you wanna make sure that your yarn is against your hook. Sometimes it can pull and then you can leave a big gap in your work. So just make sure that your yarn is right up to your hook. Okay, we're gonna continue with making four single crochet. Here's one, two, three, Four, and then we'll make our last decrease. And then our last single crochet, the next four stitches. Ending in the stitch with our stitch marker. Okay, we're gonna change our stitch marker. You're gonna take a quick pause here Give a lot of slack on your yarn. You can also add your stitch markers so you don't lose your place. And we're just gonna add a bit of stuffing. You wanna make sure to grab enough stuffing to fit each foot. We did make a ridge from round four so that our foot would sit flat. You don't want it over stuff. You wanna make sure that when you're stuffing, you're not rounding out the bottom. You're making sure that it's flat. You can still add a good amount of stuffing while keeping it flat. Continue stuffing the body, only stuff it about three-fourths full because it makes it a lot easier as you crochet and it makes less holes. Here we're going to continue on to round 18. We're going to decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next three stitches. We're going to make our first decrease. This is decrease one. We're gonna single crochet in the next three. So we have single crochet one, two, and three. And then here's our second decrease. Single crochet three, so this is one. Single crochet in the next two. Single crochet three. Then we're gonna make our third decrease. Single crochet one, two, and three. We're gonna make our fourth decrease here. Then we're gonna single crochet one, two, and three. And then we're gonna make our fifth decrease and then end with three single crochet. When you add your stuffing, it does get interesting when you try to hold your piece when you're used to crocheting without stuffing. So just do the best you can. Okay, we're going to change our stitch marker. Moving on to round 19, we're gonna decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. So we're gonna decrease in our first stitches. I always say stitch, but I mean stitches. <laughs> single crochet one, single crochet two, this is our second decrease. Single crochet one, single crochet two. This is our third decrease. Single crochet one, 
into and then we're going to make our fourth decrease single crochet one and two and then we're going to make our last decrease this is number five and then single crochet one and two we're going to change our stitch marker for round 20 we're going to decrease single crochet in the next stitch so you see that there's quite a pattern we're just losing one stitch as we go and take a second here and just add a little bit more stuffing. I like to make a center hole in my piece and then add stuffing to that center hole. I also like to adjust my safety eyes to make sure that they're straight on the inside because sometimes the stuffing can drag the middle of your eyes down and make them look like they're looking off into different directions. <laughs> so add a bit more stuffing. Don't overstuff it all the way to the top where it's really tight because it'll be really tough to crochet. So now we're going to continue on to round 20. So we're going to decrease in that first stitch, single crochet in the next. We're going to do this five times. So this is decrease two. single crochet, decrease three, single crochet, decrease four, single crochet, and then decrease five and end with a single crochet. This is like our last chance to stuff. So I'm just gonna give myself some slack and make sure that I'm happy with the amount of stuffing that I have. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more because the top of her head needs some work. So I like to make that little hole in the middle and then add a bit more stuffing. You can use the back of your crochet hook or a pair of really sharp scissors um, to get that stuffing in there. So I think I'm happy with the way she's looking, so we will continue on. Okay, we're getting so close to the end. Here's round 21. If you forgot to change your stitch marker like I did, you can change it now. We're going to decrease five times around. So decrease in that first stitch. I'm having a bit of trouble. Let's get in there. So we're gonna decrease one. Move our hair out of the way. <laughs> decrease two. Decrease three. decrease four, and then one last decrease. Okay, you can change your stitch marker. And then for round 22, we're just gonna single crochet in the next five stitches. And this could probably be the trickiest round of all, only because it's a little hard to see those stitches. So you just wanna pull up on your last stitch and just find where your next one is. And it is pretty hidden. So you may even need to take your yarn needle just to pull it up. And if you have to count backwards, sometimes it's easier to see your stitches when you start next to the stitch marker. So this is four and then my fifth one is hidden under here. So you just really work your hook underneath and it is a bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie, I really struggled, but we got it. So now we're gonna single crochet in each stitch around. Okay, 
Okay, and this is the last stitch. It's a little tough to get into as well. The next round will be easier. Okay, change your stitch marker for round 23. We're gonna increase in each stitch around. So remember to increase is just adding two single crochet in each stitch. So our first stitch here, we're gonna add two single crochet. And then moving on to our next stitch, we'll do our second decrease, two single crochet. I meant increase, did I say decrease? Increase. This is our third increase. And our fourth increase. And then we'll make our last increase. But on our last stitch, we're gonna change colors. So we do wanna hold off making our last single crochet. We're gonna insert our hook we're gonna yarn over and pull through, but then we're gonna pause when we have two loops on the hook. Put your guide down and grab your other color. Instead of making that handy knot, we can't do that here because it might be showing. So we're gonna hang a yarn tail down. You're gonna get set up with your new color and you're gonna hold both pieces the best you can. <laughs> it gets a little crazy. And then you wanna yarn over with your blue yarn. So I'm just gonna pull both of my yarns tight and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through to complete the single crochet with my new color. Okay, so we're gonna change our stitch marker. Everything's gonna loosen up a little, so you wanna pull down on your blue. Make sure you give yourself a good tail. And then we're gonna move on to round 24, and we're gonna make an increase in the first stitch and a single crochet in the next. So in that first stitch here, we're gonna make an increase. So try to hold your yarn down the best you can. Insert your hook in that first stitch and we're gonna make an increase. We're gonna make a single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase in the next stitch. This is our second increase. Then we have a single crochet. I'm gonna leave this pink hanging because I am gonna use this. I'm not gonna cut it off. So here's our single crochet. Make sure I'm on the right track here. Okay, we're gonna increase in the next stitch. Single crochet in the next. This is our fourth increase. single crochet. We're going to make an increase. We're going to end with a single crochet, but we are going to make another color change. Pull through with our blue yarn, leaving two loops on the hook, and we're just going to pull up on that pink yarn to make things easier. So ditch your blue, grab your pink, pull through, and now we will continue on with our pink yarn. So change your stitch marker. For round 25, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna single crochet three times in the first stitch, and then we're gonna slip stitch in the second stitch. We're gonna continue this seven times around. So we're gonna make three single crochet in that first stitch. Then we're gonna move over and make a slip stitch. To make a slip stitch, you're gonna insert your hook, yarn over, pull up, and pull right through the stitch. We'll make three single crochet in the next stitch. Two, three, and then move over and make a slip stitch. At this point, everything is secure so you can cut your blue yarn so that it's not in your way because there's a lot of things going on here. We're gonna continue by making three single crochet in the same stitch, and then a slip stitch. Continue making three single crochet in one stitch, 
and then moving over and making a slip stitch. You'll notice you have one stitch remaining. You can make three single crochet into that last stitch with the stitch marker. Okay, from here we're gonna make something called a seamless join. So I'm gonna take out my stitch marker, I'm gonna leave a long tail, and I'm gonna give that a cut. Instead of fastening off, I'm gonna pull my yarn straight out. I'm gonna grab my yarn needle, and thread that yarn through. I'm gonna pull up to see which was my last stitch, which was this one, and I'm gonna move one stitch over. I'm gonna insert my hook underneath both loops and pull that through, and then I'm gonna go to my last stitch that I made, and I'm gonna insert my hook down the middle of the stitch. I'm gonna pull that through and then I like to pull it tight. That makes like a faux stitch. From here we have to weave in all of our ends. So weave in your ends by going back and forth. I try to stick around the same color. And then we'll do the same with our blue. If you can see here we have this pink line that we made when we made our last color change instead of attaching the color we just pulled it up if you really don't like that pink yarn if you can even notice it i don't it doesn't bother me so i leave it but if it does bother you just go ahead and cut the pink yarn and right before round 25 just attach it like we did with the blue if that makes sense <laughs> leave a comment below if you have a question because I'm not trying to confuse you more. Continue weaving in both yarn pieces and we'll meet back. Yay, we're almost done you guys. We just have to make two arms and a bow and then we are good to go. So let's move on to the arms. We're gonna get started by making the arm by putting three single crochet into a magic circle. This is just another way that I make a magic circle and I'm gonna link that video below. You can always chain two and make three single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Okay, I made three single crochet. I'm gonna tighten my loop. When you start out with a small amount of stitches, like we do with three, your work tends to turn in on itself. So you just wanna make sure that you keep turning it back towards you. So here we have three stitches. I'm gonna place a stitch marker in my last stitch of the round. And then for round two, we're gonna increase in each stitch around. So we're gonna insert our hook in the first stitch and we are gonna make our first increase. Single crochet one and single, sorry, single crochet two. Then we're gonna make an increase in our second stitch. One, and two, and then finish off in our last stitch with an increase. We are gonna tighten our middle by pulling on that tail, and then we're just gonna fan out our stitches just because they're kind of turning in on themselves. We wanna make sure that we have them facing out. Okay, we're gonna change our stitch marker, and for round three, we're gonna single crochet in the next six stitches but we're gonna do a color change, so we wanna make note of that on our last stitch. So here, we're gonna single crochet all the way around. This is four, five, and then we were gonna insert our hook in this last stitch, yarn over, pull through, and now we're gonna grab our other color. For me, it's pink. I'm gonna do my knot 
on my blue, pull the knot down, ditch your blue and grab your pink, and then yarn over and pull through. It's so much easier for me when I attach it in, with a knot than trying to hold it. So for round four and five, we are gonna single crochet in the next six stitches. So just continue all the way around for four and five in your pink. And at the end of round five, we're gonna do another color change. So this is the end of round four. We're gonna change our stitch marker. And then starting round five, we're gonna single crochet all the way around, making our color change in the last stitch. Because our blue is already there, we're just gonna pull up on our blue and drop our pink. So here is our last stitch. We're gonna insert our hook. We're gonna yarn over, pull through. We're gonna stop, grab our blue. We have a lot of tails going on here. And we're just gonna continue by yarning over and pulling through with our blue. We're gonna change our stitch marker. And for round six through eight, so for three rounds, we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches and then we're going to make a color change at the end of round eight. I'm going to take a second here to stuff in these little tails because they do tend to get in the way. I just want the two yarn that pieces that I'm working with. We're going to set up again with our color blue and we are going to single crochet in the next six stitches from round six through eight we will make a color change in the last stitch of round eight. I am going into my last stitch of round eight. I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna drop my blue and pick up my pink. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. We're gonna change our stitch marker and we are gonna work single crochets in the next two rounds. So for round nine and 10, we're gonna work our pink and then we're gonna change our color back to blue at the end of round 10. Here we're reaching the end of round 10, so I'm going into my last stitch. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, drop my pink and pick up my blue. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. Change your stitch marker and then from rounds 11 through 13, we're gonna single crochet in the next six stitches. And at the end of round 13, we will change back to pink. Okay, I'm reaching my last stitch of round 13. I'm gonna make my color change here. So I'm gonna grab my pink and pull through. Change your stitch marker. And we are gonna continue with the pink from round 14 to 15, single crocheting in the next six stitches around. We're gonna change our color at the end of round 15. Reaching the end of round 15 here. Oops, I forgot my color change. We're gonna do that here, yarn over, drop the pink and pick up the blue. and then yarn over and pull through. I'm gonna change my stitch marker from round 16 through 18, we're gonna single crochet in the next six. I don't know if you see here this little knot that I have in my work, it's where they connected yarn. If you do have that, you could always cut the yarn and attach it, but most times if I continue crocheting with it, it'll just hide on the inside of the piece. So continue crocheting round 17 and 18, and you'll make your color change at the end of round 18. Okay, reaching the end of round 18, we're gonna make our color change here. So drop your blue, pick up your pink, and then we'll yarn over and pull through. Change your stitch marker, and then round 19 and 20 will be made in the pink. So just single crochet all the way around for 19 and 20, we only have two color changes to go. I know color changing is not the most fun. Actually, 
single crocheting around in six is not the most fun, but um, it looks really cute on her when she's done. So here I'm going to change my stitch marker and we'll just do round 20 together. Okay, so we're reaching the end of round 20. We're going to make our color change here. And then from round 21 to 23, we're going to single crochet all the way around in the next six stitches. I got a little out of frame here, but at the end of round 23, you're going to make your color change and then you're going to change your stitch marker and we are going to work our pink for the last four rows. So from round 24 through 27, you are going to single crochet all the way around in the next six in your pink and then we will be finishing off. At this point, you can cut your blue yarn or whatever color you're using just so it's out of the way and you can just tuck that in. Continue from round 24 through 27 and we'll meet back at the end. Okay, I reached the last stitch of round 27, so I'm going to fasten off by leaving a long piece of yarn for attaching. And then I'm just going to yarn over and pull my yarn all the way through and give it a little tug at the end. So now you want to rewind the video and make one more arm, or you can look at the written pattern if that's easier. I will put the link in the description box below. So make two arms and then we'll meet back for assembly. We've made it to assembly guys. If you have some straight pins, grab those at this time because we are going to start to attach the arms. In my pattern it says to attach the arms between round 11 and 12 and 14 and 15. So I'm counting to find between 11 and 12 and I'll make a pin mark there, and then I'll just count up to find round 14 and 15. And I mark it with my pins. And then on the other side, you can just follow along and mark that side as well. I just like to get an idea of where I'm gonna be placing the arms. So I will place my arms in between those pins, and I like to start with the fastened off piece in the back. I will try my best to pin the arm in place just so I have an idea of how it looks before I attach it. Because we're only working with six stitches, this can be, it can be a little difficult and finicky, so just do the best you can. So here I'm going to try to stay on the rounds that I have in my pattern, but that is just a, just a follow along number you do not it is not set in stone you put your arms where you think they look the cutest I just like them near the eyes but if you like them lower that's totally fine it's not a big deal this is supposed to be fun and not stressful I have definitely stressed myself out with attaching things and through the years I've learned that I have to let it go so I will tell you that piece of advice Okay, so here we have our arm in place. What you want to do is put your yarn needle underneath a stitch of the body. And then you want to go under both loops of a stitch on the arm. Okay, so we placed our yarn needle in between round 14 and 15, and now we're going to work down the rounds so that we can reach round 11 and 12. I'm going to go through a stitch of the body, and then I'm going to go through a underneath both loops of the arm. So moving straight down, I'm just moving down between the row, between the rounds, grabbing a stitch of the body. And 
and then going under a stitch of the arm. Periodically, I just want to check that I'm on the right track. Sometimes things can get a little out of place while we're attaching. So I'm going to do one more stitch moving down. And then I'm going to go underneath the arm. And you don't want to skip a stitch, so make sure that each stitch is taken. Now we're going to go across between round 11 and 12. And then we're going to go through a stitch of the arm. And then I'm actually going to go through one more stitch here. And one through the arm. And then I'm going to go up, back up to round 14 and 15. So we'll go body and arm, and then another stitch of the body. And then the arm. I'm going to break the rules here and go one more time through my stitch because it just seemed like it needed it. And then what I'm going to do is make a knot at the end of my work. And you definitely do not have to do this. You can just weave your yarn through. But if you want to, you can leave a little loop before you pull your yarn all the way through. And then you can put your yarn needle behind that loop and pull tight. That'll make a little knot there and it'll keep it in place. And then what I do is weave my yarn needle very close to where that knot is. And then that will stay in place. So there's your arm, it's nice and attached. And we are gonna do the same on the other side. I'm gonna weave my yarn in a little bit more. So feel free to do that. And then just snip off the remaining yarn when you're all done. In real talk here, since you guys are my crochet people, um, not liking the way I attached that arm. <laughs> I do not like that little loop that was stuck on top. So if this, if I wasn't doing a video right now, I would most likely before I weaved and made the knot, I would probably have taken it apart. So if you, are looking at your work and you do not like the way it looks then you do not want to make the knot and you don't want to weave in your yarn you'll want to take your yarn out and then redo your work but I'm going with it so we're gonna go on to the next side and we're gonna put our pins in place and when you're working with feet or arms you kind of just want to measure however you can just to make sure that they're on the same plain, same level, whatever you want to call it. So here I'm just going to mess around a little bit until I think that it looks even. Okay, once you're all set, you do a little dance and then you grab your yarn needle and thread your yarn through. So here we're going to do the exact same thing. I have my fasten off in the back and I'm going to go down a stitch. I'm going to try something different because I didn't like starting on that top stitch. I feel like assembly is such a personal preference kind of thing because technically you could do the math and go up twice on the sides and attach once at the top but for me I never do that. <laughs> I always choose my own path so just do what works for you. So here I'm just going to go through a stitch of the body and a stitch of the arm and I'm going to check as I go to make sure everything still looks good. So now I'm going to go across between around 11 and 12. And then I'm going to go up through the arm. And then I'm going to go up on the other side. I'm just double checking and then continue going through the body and the arm
Okay, so I'm going up and I reached around 14 and 15. I'm gonna go through my arm. And then I'm gonna go across 14 and 15. Okay, so now I wanna make the knot in the back. So I'm gonna go through a stitch and I'm gonna pull my yarn through and then leave a little loop on the end. Then I'm gonna take my yarn needle and go behind that loop. It gets a little tricky if it turns on you. And once I pull that through, it'll make a tiny knot on the end. And then I'll insert my needle really close to the knot and weave my yarn through the piece. I wanted to show you how she looked really quick with her arms attached. I like to knot them like she's hugging herself. And we will move on to the last step, which is the bow, just to give her a little accent piece. Okay, we are gonna start by making the bow. Choose whichever color you'd like. In my case, I'm gonna use blue. I'm gonna leave an extra long tail, about 12 inches or so. And then we're gonna make a slip knot. So we're gonna wrap the yarn around two fingers, crisscrossing at the top. I'm gonna hold the tail with my ring finger. I'm gonna push that back piece to the front and then pull up on that piece. You can use your tail to adjust your loop. Insert your hook and we are going to chain three. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. We are gonna start by making three double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So here is the third chain from the hook. We are gonna place three double crochet. For a double crochet, you are gonna yarn over, insert your hook into that third chain. You're gonna yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook. You're gonna yarn over and go through two loops. You'll have two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two loops again. To make your second double crochet, we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops, you're gonna yarn over and go through two loops, yarn over, go through two loops again. So now we're gonna make our third double crochet into that same stitch. So continue with your third double crochet. Just gonna grab some yarn here. We are going to continue by chaining three. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through for a third time. Then we're gonna make a slip stitch in that same stitch. And that means that it's this big hole that's the stitch we'll be working into. So insert your hook into that hole. Yarn over, pull through. Pull right through that stitch. That's a slip stitch. Now we're gonna chain three again. So we're gonna chain one, two, and three. And we're gonna double crochet three times again into the same stitch. And that is still our really big loop that we have here. It's gonna grow bigger as we crochet. So this is double crochet one, double crochet two, and double crochet three. Then we're gonna make three more chain stitches, one, two, and three. And then we're gonna slip stitch once again into that big hole right here. So insert your loop, pull up, and go right through your last stitch. And now you have this big funny looking thing. I'm gonna put this down for a second. I'm gonna leave an extra long tail and snip that off. And then we're just gonna fasten off our working yarn. So yarn over and pull that yarn all the way through. So your other piece will be your slip knot. You're gonna wanna tighten that. And now it's starting to resemble more of a bow. Make sure that that middle is tight and then take that slip knot piece 
and wrap it around the middle. I do this about three or four times. And then take your other piece of yarn. You wanna go opposite of your piece, of that slip knot piece. So we're gonna wrap one, two, three, and four. And now we're gonna make a double knot in the back. So once you have that knotted, you can just mess around with your bow and that's it. That's the easy bow. We are just going to place it right on top of her head. You can cut the tails and add this with fabric glue or you can just double knot in the back and then you can also weave in those pieces into her body. Okay, now for my favorite part, the candy. My daughter and I love these so much. If you're giving this away for Valentine's Day, it's just a really fun thing to add. You can insert the lollipop stick into her arm, into the stitches, if you wanted it to stay, or you could just put it in like she's giving a hug. So she's all done. Thank you guys so much for sticking through this crochet along with me. I really appreciate it. If you want more crochet alongs and crochet tutorials, please subscribe to my channel and head over to yarnsociety.com for free crochet patterns and I'll see you guys next week.